Okay. Hopefully audio is okay. Let me go ahead and check that. Looks fine on my side, but... Ah, proof is in the pudding, as they say. Just need, obviously, people to tell me, but hopefully it's okay. So, here we are. This is... A good way to spur myself to actually get on with things, really. I have communicated with Admiral Dadman, our opponent of the... All Against the Homeland series? I think I changed the name in it, I couldn't remember the original name. Uh, but our esteemed opponent, who kicked my ass at sea continuously. <laughs> he's great, he's great. Uh, he's the moderator on the One of the Big Admirals Edition forum. Great guy, great guy. Um, but we have spoken about playing a new game, so we're going to be doing that. Uh, we will be tackling a Scenario 2 campaign at his suggestion. He said, uh, essentially, to so give us a bit of a head start, a bit of a boost. Also a few changes that we'll be talking about as well. I'll go over those a little bit. But yes, I, I just want to go ahead and clarify on the other campaign. It's not dead as such. It's uh, mainly due to the fact that um, my good friend Infinite Monkey is extraordinarily busy at the moment. He's doing great things. You will actually see those things in the future and uh, they are related uh, to a certain series of games that we are playing currently. So that'd be cool. But he's busy, very, very busy. So I thought rather than to take the analogy of spinning plates, rather than take sole control of that thing, Gary did a, uh, sorry, Infinite Monkey did a tremendous job helping and uh, just, just really did a lot, did a lot, especially pilot-wise. And just we would always discuss strategies. So yes, um, really as much as out of respect for him and also just for the fact that I don't want to go ahead into a campaign and have spinning plates I'm not aware of and have some of them break. So I thought, well, we'll continue that one in the future. It's not going anywhere, and maybe one day we'll have it resumed. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and play a second play-by-email campaign, learn from the first, and in a new scenario, it's going to be interesting. will be wildly, wildly entertaining, at least I hope. How you doing there, Jonathan? Good to have you. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so with that in mind, take a look at these options. I may change any of these if I've got it wrong but I think we would probably be going with player defined upgrades dad man is essentially fine for pretty much no house rules we do have a couple in mind uh, we will be playing this time uh, political points moving units out of Manchuria out of the Kwantung army into China proper uh, and that'll go for basically Thai forces uh, we'll have to double check about Thai uh, but Japanese forces out of China and into China, essentially try and, yeah, try not to uh, have a China that is, is one-sided. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but he says essentially he'll be doing the same with his own forces, so that's pretty good. And we're going to have unit withdrawals on. That was actually a bit of a blunder in hindsight. <laughs> it was nice to have the tie forces. But then people are like, you know, he uh, he's going to have a whole heck of a lot of shit that isn't going anywhere. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a good point, actually. Uh, I think reinforcements... I'd have to speak to him, but I've seen variable. I think extremely variable is like plus or minus 60 days. I would have to double check. But I think perhaps variable, but it depends. Fix could be interesting. We'll have to debate about that one, really. Uh, but we have realistic R&D off, no unit withdrawal off, reliable USN torpedoes off. Uh, obviously, forgot got war. <laughs> that one, that'd make things spicy. <laughs> Yeah, and the 7 7 surprise roll. So, I think that's what we got there. I could be wrong there. These ones here, if it matters. Just going through things. Has been a while since I last played, really. So, it's going through things my own benefit to a degree. That's off. Screw that thing. Absolutely screw that thing. Screw that. That is fine. Because I can dictate manually what has replacements on anyway. It doesn't always make that much of a difference. We're not playing as AI, we're playing Monte Cycles, so that's fine. So there we go, we got that out of the way. We'll be taking a look at the Hako Ichio. Ichio. My Japanese isn't as great as it once was, so forgive the pronunciation. But we have the scenario 2 here. So the Grand Campaign covered in uh, the entire world of the Pacific from the start of the attack on Pearl Harbor up to 1946. I think May 46, but I could be wrong. And due to the foresight of Japanese high command, the Empire has a few surprises for the Allies. In this scenario, Japan begins a war better prepared for the war that they have to fight. The Japanese high command will fight harder for the first six months. Have some control of either the Japanese or the Allied armed forces in a bit of control of the entire Pacific. 
Can you do better than Admiral Isroku Yamamoto or Nimitz? I will find out about that. So, this will be my first actual proper look at Scenario 2, and I thought I'd let people get in on here. And also, people can go ahead and comment what they would they, uh, advise. Um, I do, of course, have the Discord. I'm going to go ahead and show that. And, uh, <laughs> oh, AT, you are my man. Okay, so essentially, what you want to go ahead and do is join the Voices of the Osrunt Discord. I don't know how to show that in a better way, but there, I'll post a link. And if you go down here to the, um, where to find it, the Embrace and Defeat room over here, this is kind of where we're going to be going ahead and doing things here. And uh, using this as the room for discussion, which is already underway. It's really cool. Thank you, AT. Doing a grand job. Lots of great people. And it will be intriguing. We've got a lot of things to work out, such as R&D and just, yeah, lots of things. Lots and lots and lots of things. I also do need to remember how to play the game. Shouldn't take too long. But anyhow, Agumo's first air fleet has been at sea since November 26, 1941. On the 3rd of December, Agumo refueled and the point of no return had been reached. Kidabotai was committed to the attack. The time for negotiations had passed. On December 4th, the first of the invasion fleet sorted and sallied towards their objectives. By now, December 7th, the first two waves of strike aircraft should be approaching their target, Bell Harbor. All there is left to do is now wait. There we go. So, does it give us an idea of the additional assets? Possibly. Possibly, I haven't read through it, so there may be more detail over this. Ah, here we go. As Simpson invented, maybe a longer war than we hope. Preparations have begun to increase production of key aircraft types and readiness for the conflict. Okay, pilot training has secretly been increased, and the training of a new army of a new army has begun. Okay. Interesting. We'll take a look. Ooh, Nettie's Catalan. I'm going to have to learn how to pronounce that one. That's a great name. I'm going to have to learn how to say that too. Not much. Not much shaken. I'll just basically take a look at the scenario too. Be the first time I should take a look at it in probably over a year. Not longer. And just get into groups of things. Now also, the map mod I'm using right now. If you guys have ever seen Starship Troopers, it's kind of uh, along the lines of when, uh, I forget the bloody names now, but essentially when he makes Rico Sergeant and he says, uh, you're my guy essentially until I find somebody, uh, uh, until you're dead or I find somebody better. So that's kind of how I'm feeling about this map mod. It's great, but it's bloody bright at night. I've got this uh, 2K monitor and it, it's, it's like staring at the surface of the sun. It's bloody bright. <laughs> Yes, um, looking towards starting a new play by email with Admiral Dadman. So that'll be fun. God, it's bright. Okay. It's a little bit later here at night, so I'm going to go ahead and give myself the benefit of a nightlight. I'm getting old, people. Right, so we'll have to take a look at a few things then. Obviously, try and figure out the change to the actual campaign. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is go fear to fight fear. So the marshals always tend to be like a pretty interesting point. Oh, okay, yeah, here we go. So not only are these the A5M4s, if I remember correctly, that do begin here on Kala Jalim. Kala Jalim, however you want to pronounce that. Uh, so we actually do have zero so we have about nine. But we do have three in reserve, which is not bad. At least that's something. What else do we have? G3 M227, the usual, I believe, and then G4 and one Betty. Which is interestingly on its own. Can't recall if that is the case, but it probably seems so. Oh, yes, it's one of those god-awful groups of where you have multiple aircraft. Yeah, they're god-awful. Those things have a special place in hell. She can't define the bloody squadron. It's a pain in the ass. Uh, there is a, um, a fix essentially around it in, in the fact that we just go ahead and um, if we were to upgrade you to a G3 M2, for example. Uh, I don't think I can upgrade right now. Oh, I'm on the wrong. No, I'm on the G4 M1. Or I could just disband the group. Yeah, either or. I forget the easy fix. It's been a while. But essentially, something along those lines. I'd probably go ahead and. What? Yeah, I'd probably go ahead and do that. Thank God, I thought it was mixed with fire group there, but that'd be impossible. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. 
and have that group split by him. Oh, the old car. Do we have different aircraft types in this one? I'm gonna uh, different aircraft. I'm gonna have to take a look at that. Okay. Aces K two. Oh, I know you're gonna want to hear it, George. 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 There you go. Hey, didn't they're salty. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're looking towards. Is another play by email. This is essentially like the inspiration. I like to do these streams, like inspiration streams, quote unquote, mostly because it's like uh, <laughs> I'm waiting to get back into it. It's been a while. I've been very busy. So we do have our usual around here. I would be really, really intrigued to see if we actually did have some success over here. I do like the midgets. I do have great hopes for them. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, you know it, Georgie. Georgie, George, George, George. There we go. Yeah, that's a good point there, Noel. <laughs> that's a good point. That map mod looked fantastic, and I may yet go back to it. This one is perhaps a little bit harder to tell whether or not something is deep water or shallow water. It looks great. You can tell it's a little bit harder. So maybe I will switch to another one, but we'll see. I have to actually go ahead and uh, check them out again. Hey, do they keep keep? Yeah, so anyhow, um, if I go ahead and check on certain... Oops. I do like the background zone. I could probably keep that. They're only images after all. So if I go ahead and check out the Kilipatai over here. I think there's changes to the classes of certain carriers. So we do have Hiru. Soru. Soru. Oh, Soru. Shukaku. Shukaku. I'm trying to recall if there is differences now with the Kidipatai. I haven't actually read uh, the background notes to Scenario 2, so I can't say so. <laughs> My top five best map mods, yeah. <laughs> I've used quite a few, and it's incredibly disorientating if you haven't uh, been aware of a transition. You suddenly like bring up the game, and you're like, well, bring up the video, and you're like, wow, what the hell happened here? Okay, our magic moves there. They're gonna be great. Thinking about how we want to go about things, might as well talk about it here. You guys can just comment and as you please. Uh, what I'm considering doing here then is because the Kaga and Akagi are a wee bit slower. As you can see here, cruise allows about four. Yeah, but it's the max speed that matters really. You know what, George? I'm going to say a big maybe, because I can't remember that. So you could have said, uh... You could have said anything, and I would have agreed. I can't remember that one. But maybe. <laughs> okay. I do like how it shows the oil. Quite a cool map mod, actually. It's got some nice features, actually. Just certain aspects need to be changed, really. That'd be quite nice. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at certain things such as industry. I'd have to go ahead and actually compare uh, to the vanilla game to see a big difference. Boy, we start 50, 20, 20, okay. I'd have to go ahead and get a scenario one side by side to take a look at that. So I'll do that later on actually. This is very much just me looking at the scenario. Okay. What do we have then? See Navy first. So we are the normal ones over here for most uh, ones out of uh, Thailand or Sam? Thailand. Yeah, Thailand. Hello. Okay. I think a couple more zero squadrons to begin with. Possibly additional zeros over here on truck and maybe Timian. Again, would have to double check to be sure of that. Yeah, do have a couple there. We actually do have an A5 and 4 claw squadron out of action here temporarily. A day there, okay. 66 zeros in a pool there, not bad. Would be eager to switch those out there. 
Okay, so let's just talk general things then. So I talked about uh, Akagi and Kaga. I think uh, I think generally what I would probably look towards doing, kind of theorizing at the moment, is uh, that we have four of the fast Kidipatai carriers actually sent out to hit Pearl Harbor. I do think Pearl Harbor is just a fantastic opportunity that you get on day one there. I just think it's great. There are other things you can do. There's definitely lots of other things you can do. But... <laughs> And in fairness, the uh, the last campaign kind of did prove that you don't you don't necessarily have to hit Pearl Harbor uh, to have a relatively successful campaign. It just sure as hell makes things a little bit easier. I mean, we never did see the um, true course of not hitting Pearl Harbor, but essentially, there's a lot of American flight planes, a lot of other things, <laughs> and it's great if you can just get a free shot at them. To be honest, it just it just kind of takes a little bit of momentum. Um, I'm definitely going to not hang around for a second day. I value my... Not, mm, yeah, I value my aircraft too much on the Kidipatai. I really prefer not to lose any, but you can't do that. So, I think probably what we'll do then is stick around for the single strike. At that point... I do have feelings about potentially further splitting the fast Kidipatai into two and two, but... As pairs against a single American carrier, like it, it could be potentially done, but the issue is then is if you run into the uh, two American carriers together, if they do merge, I don't think they can merge on day one, but they could potentially hit close enough together to make it a potential issue. Uh, I just don't want to get caught out, so I probably would keep with the four carriers. It's one of those of when you, if you do find one or anything, you're going to hit it with pretty much overwhelming force, and it, it's relative safety. But I think at that point, what we'd go ahead and do then is have them. Um, Translate to the Wake Island covering mission, essentially. I got burned at Wake, not gonna lie. Pains me to this day, multiple times. I don't, I don't want to get burned at Wake. <laughs> it's one of those of like, it doesn't matter that much, but it is useful to have. Sometimes it's useful to deny to the enemy, sometimes it's useful just to say, ha, I fucking got Wake this time. Other times, and most of the time, it is pretty useful to have some float planes out there. It just gives you a little bit more room of where he has to run the detection combat. Marcus Island's great. So you can see, essentially, having, I don't know, let's say, I don't know, Rhinema, or Neville we'll Talk. I'm going to go with Rhinema, Wake, Marcus. It gives you a nice little channel islands that you can kind of use there for detection. Very handy, very handy indeed. So I think at that point, they go out here to help up Wake Island. First day, really before the warrior begins, um, anything that's not required here will get the hell out of dodge. I do have my submarine tenders over there. Uh, fuel's gonna have to be rolling out immediately for the most part. We do have what, 250 ish? Two, uh, 317k fuel there, truck. Yeah, the odd BBs are worth a lot of points, that's true. And that's what I mean. That's why I do like the Pearl Harbor Strike. You do get to hit things. It's not guaranteed that you even get to sink them. Uh, but there's always a chance you get to sink them. It's more so about hitting the airfield for me. But just hand anything's kind of a bonus. I mean, in some ways you could argue that maybe more of a focus on the airfield and the shipyard could be good. But yeah. Um, hitting those big old birds is pretty useful. They will come back. And they will go ahead and be bombarded and things later down the line. I don't really want to give them the opportunity where they can actually have like a, a, a proper bombardment of like, uh, well, a proper bombardment spot, BB spot, of a landing force, etc. Without having to commit some of his uh, more modern battleships. I don't want to give him that opportunity. I kind of want to force him to the situation where he kind of has to, if he wants big guns, then he's going to have to use the newer ones. But yeah, it's not like, it's not like I could do all that much. You kind of have to rely on Lady Love for that one. I do have the email here on the other screen. He did propose some changes as well, actually, so we'll have to wait for him to make those changes, essentially. But let's see. Let's find them. Okay. Yeah, so he says, essentially, there's some things I'd like to fix. Nagumo is not timid, just the opposite. So he's talking about, essentially, uh, editing some of the leaders, but especially Nagumo and increasing his aggression. Uh, he says, I'll also tone down the USCV capacity to prevent me from overloading them with extra squadrons early on, which is really nice. Uh, I'll have no house rules that I can think of. Oh, I have no house rules I can think of. If you want to evade Pearl Harbor on turn one, feel free. Obviously, I can't do that. 
Uh, I can't do to you what I did before, damn it. Which makes me wonder, does he mean that he did the Pearl Harbor thing cancellation on purpose? Maybe he did. Maybe he bloody did. I don't know. <laughs> uh, indeed. Okay. And then we we're talking about little restrictions. So he's okay with first time restrictions. I mentioned essentially the obvious, which we'll go over in a little bit. Uh, he says, I would like the bridge to make term one change to anything West the international dateline, as they would have had notice of Pearl Harbor raid. Okay. I agree requiring to pay people for moving LCUs out of our sign area. I will do the same for the West Coast and Aussies attached to LCUs as well. I was doing that in our other game as well. Personnel changes are very few, just annoying. Like Nagumo is too timid and underrated for service, as is Fletcher. USCVs are way overpowered for the first six months, cutting their aircraft capacity would be more historical and had a company as well. USBBs that get a rebuild should be forced to the uh, back to the West Coast, so an increase in shipyard repair is required. I saw stuff like that, I'd like to add some flavour and challenge me to end of the month. Oh, essentially we're talking about potentially trying to get it going by the end of the month. We'll see about that. How you doing there, Teddy? Yeah. Yeah! Ooh, the Mercing Gambit's always a spicy one, isn't it? We'll see about that one. But yeah, there's some of the things I was uh, talking about. I'd really... I could do like a Scenario 2 list. If someone's watching this and has like access to a Scenario 2 list of changes, that'd be bloody good. I'm going to go ahead and Google that as I speak. And then we'll go ahead and talk about the Mercing Gambit thing in a moment. I will touch upon Pearl Harbor. Uh, sorry, the Philippines. Uh, I've also read some ARs. There's actually not that many ARs over... Uh, well, covering scenario two. One of them was over very quickly. Uh, but one of them had a tremendously helpful list of divisions that are basically free and available. So it's pretty useful to actually have them planned out and figure out where they're going to go. And there's always this second division, which, if I recall, is... Come on, screen. There we go. Second division's around here somewhere. It's not... Yeah, ah, sixth, first division? Am I picking up? No. Second division. Where's second division? I'm sure the hell it's around here. Ah, okay, there we go. I'm not talking, I'm not talking crazy. Yeah, so we have elements of it at Oaki, Sendai, and aboard Task Force 124. Uh, what I do like to go ahead and do then. Yes, yeah, Sendai. Oaki, okay. What I do like to do is actually have the second division formed as a whole and have that utilized. In my opinion, it's just far better. Uh, let me see. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, salty. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. I've got to be honest, I have been really, really tremendously busy as of late. I did have the end of the second year of my bachelor's. Ah, finally moving into the third year. Can't wait. But I had that. Had a whole heck of a lot of streams. And then uh, I took on some Mandarin classes that uh, the Confucius Institute, my university, was offering. And uh, not for free. I wish it was for free. And just in general, been busy. Been very busy. Been helping my girlfriend with uh, moving around and things of that nature. Um, I will be moving as well back to my university city of Sheffield from the 10th, so that'd be cool. Should hopefully have a little bit more free time there when I move out of the family house again. Just lots of things, lots of things. And uh, there's no overload on squadrons. Ah, the no overload on squadrons because of the F4F3 didn't have fallen wings. Yeah, which is really awesome for him to be able to just say that. I mean, it's obviously like reducing his own capacity there, so that's great. It does, it does really help us. If I recall, it does mean that uh, the F4F threes, the Wildcats over here awake, won't in theory be able to jump over to those carriers and become an immediate problem. Could be wrong on that one. I'm trying to find the scenario to change list. Let me go ahead and search the forum. This, uh, this stream is going to be a little bit rambly, I should imagine. But it'll become more focused as we really get more in motion. Uh, it's on the forum now. But uh, one of the East 2 scenario. Uh, sorry, play by email would be nice. That'd be a fun scenario. Uh, 
That's Pacific. That's weird. I haven't uploaded or I've done anything on my own channel for like nearly a month. And if, I don't know. It could be longer than that. No, no, no. About about three, four-ish weeks. I want to go ahead and get back to some Civil War 2. That'd be fun. Uh, me and the historical game we're talking about actually playing like a play by email of, of Civil War 2. So I need to go ahead and actually practice this Confederacy. So that'd be fun. He'll obviously play the Union. I always play the Confederacy. Okay. Let me see. Hmm. Right, I'm trying to find this now. Yeah, I'm not finding it. That was something we'll have to look for later today. I might just even ask, uh, Dad might not just ask on the forum for a list of changes. That'd be excellent. Either way. So I have second division, and the reason why I mentioned this is because there's a, there's a couple of schools of thought regarding the Philippines. I really do like the Philippines campaign because it's one of the few ground campaigns that the Japanese actually get to fight against the Allied forces and generally win, and it's pretty it's pretty good. It's a short lived scenario, and I, I do so enjoy it. Um, but there's generally, I think on average, I think usually we'll have about two divisions and and something like a brigade sent to the Philippines. What I do like to do is usually take the 38th division. 38th, yep, there we go. I do usually like to take the 38th division and have them shipped out to Luzon as well to speed the campaign. And sometimes, and oftentimes, uh, well, really all the time since it was in the last campaign, I did take 2nd division. I should have them shipped out here to the Luzon too. Uh, but what I'm thinking about doing, oh god, this is a great time to actually go ahead and grab the, uh, the pen, the pen of epicness. It's been a while since I used this baby. I should do have a pro version because I should bloody go around to downloading it too. So I need to update it though. I don't know, let's go for it. Oh shit. I don't know, let's go ahead and say 38 and I forget the designations over two divisions. I'm assuming they're there. They could be elsewhere, but I'm assuming they're here. Um Okay, so generally that's like what I'd like to do, but I think really what I'd consider doing is, in fact, possibly having the second sent down here to Mindanao, to secure Mindanao as soon as possible. Uh, the 38th could, in fact... My mouse is weird. I don't know why my mouse is weird. I need to get this bitch sorted. But I could have the 38th sent to help with the Malayan campaign. But they'd arrive probably and likely far too late. So there's lots of things they could instead be sent down here to help out with the uh, Dutch East Indies campaign. I mean, the second screen in Mindanao is pretty good. Gives us a pretty nice launch bed there too to work with. But yeah, there's options. There's options. But essentially, I think what we're doing is we have the, uh, the two divisions. I forget usually where we land, but uh, it's around this kind of area over here. We definitely have forces land here and here-ish. But I'd probably have the two divisions more or less used to bottom them up over here at Patan. I don't like bottling up at Patan. We had a phenomenal, phenomenal Luzon campaign in the last campaign. And that was, <laughs> I was like chiefly due to the fact that we had this like horrifically lucky roll. And we actually managed to kick his ass out of Clark Field, I think it was. And it was just, it was just... It was shocking. It was, a, it was a shock. It was a shock to me. It was a shock to everybody on the stream at the time. It was a shock to that man. That's what damn sure. But can't guarantee that happening again. So I think probably go with the two division idea and brigade probably, and have them keep them over a baton. Probably just bombard, trying to degrade them, and eventually come back to finish them off after we uh, finish off the more important targets. I do like the idea of securing uh, the island of Mindanao. Like, Mindanao was one of those that, um, even in the campaign against Stand the last one, I hadn't... I, no, I had. I think I had finally fully secured it. But it was something that should have been done much sooner. So that's something I'd like to do. The sooner we secure these bases, the sooner we can move on to bigger and better. So it's a little bit of a talk about the Philippine campaign. Over here at Messing... Don't ask me the unit numbers. 
Uh, but essentially we have these units that unload and what is with this mouse? I don't know what it is. Maybe some like at an angle. I don't like trying to move it in a way that's kind of weird but uh, either way. But essentially we'd have them land the ones over here are Patani. I hate Patani so much. I hate it so much. But it's useful to have another port to unload at. Yeah, it's just a size one port, but it's just the fact that you have it already under control. Singor is good. It's in fact great because you have a size two port. It's right on the major road and on the rail as well, so it's pretty awesome. So, I don't know. I'd really like to avoid Patani and unload in Patani. We have this uh, level three airfield. This is it the level two airfield over here has Singor, but obviously you have to take into consideration uh, the amount of um, things. On said airfield. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't all say. There's no real rush to neutralize Luzon. It was great that it happened for us. Like, really great. That was a really grand roll that we had. And it'd be good if it happened again, but I don't think it'll happen again. So, yeah, we'll, we'll move on to bigger and better things. The hard part's going to be planning these invasions out. There's always a part of me that really, really considers going for like a turn one magic move in Major Sinkwang. Just because Sinkwang's so useful to have because it does help you to just basically lock off this area here and try and destroy what actually does try to escape. Uh, we do have House Rules essential where um, past the, I don't know what he said, was it West Meridian Point or something like that? I forgot what he said exactly. Uh, but essentially, Force the, uh, the two American carriers and then obviously uh, the aforementioned conditions. Uh, task forces that meet after I mentioned conditions uh, would be able to receive orders, but things basically on, on, on this side of the Pacific wouldn't. Besides 4C. So 4C is likely going to go out this way, or it could likely go that way. Depends on really how ballsy is. But for example, the Prince of Wales is fantastic. She's fast, she's heavily armoured and armed. She's just great. She's got a great radar too. Prince of Wales, pretty much good too. Can't even slag them off because they're just fantastic. <laughs> but I. Very cool. But what I'd like to do then, obviously, in that case, is have Sinkwang taken so we can actually do something about that. But I don't think we'll do that. I think we'll probably go ahead and do as well. Now that I think about it. We do have a number of battleships around. Let's go ahead and find our battleships. Um, so we have here Kirishima. They start out with Osaka of Tai. I do think about them. I don't know how I feel about them because this is it. At the end of the day, you, they are great. They are fantastic escorts for the Kid of Tai, but they burn a lot of fuel. And in this scenario as well, because we are going to be playing obviously uh, with additional heavy industry. We aren't going to have as much fuel as we would in Scenario 1, so our need for fuel is even higher than it was beforehand. And the need for resources too. Though resources doesn't tend to be a problem, it can be a problem in Bolnex unless you get it in there. Uh, but fuel is obviously a big concern. I also do like the idea of having the uh, Hiei Kirishima, because obviously these are fast battleships. I also do like have uh, the idea of having them lead other forces, invasion forces. They are, after all, battleships. So I think about that one. If I take a look at what we have in TF1 then. Ah, I love the tone case. Uh, the tone A class. These BB, yeah, so these CAs, if, if I could marry anything, it would be one of those. They're just great. I just love them. Absolutely love them. Would I rather have a Congo? Yeah, because I used to play World of Warships and I really like the Congo class. But I like the tone A class because it has that phenomenal range. It has the five max Float planes. It's got it's got a heavy cruise guns. Can't complain about those. It's got torpedoes. Got our torpedoes. Got all the torpedoes. It actually has decent AA as far as it goes for Japanese cruisers as well. I mean, you only really get to any sort of uh, you only get to anything resembling AA when you get to like the light cruiser, heavy cruiser. But usually the heavy cruiser range for Japanese uh, ships. Obviously the battleships do have decent because they do have the secondaries. But yeah, these secondaries are nice. I like the Tony. And we have the two of them, Tone and Chikimo. Love those. If I lose those, I will cry. So yeah. I'm kind of thinking, well, we'll have the Pearl Harbor strike. 
which in theory should neutralize most of the surface uh, combatants. I don't really want to get near enough to be able to be hit by anything coming out of Pearl Harbor. Uh, but in theory, you shouldn't be able to issue orders as such to the task forces in this area. I'd have to obviously double check whether Pearl Harbor is included in that or not, but I don't seem to. Um, especially considering the surprise strike is on Pearl Harbor, so it'd be kind of weird to play new about it. Uh, but yeah, the idea then is essentially having those two BVs move down this way. I think one of the places that we went wrong in the past campaign was I didn't have enough force accumulation and concentration. So I think being able to have two BBs in the area, fast BBs at that, sooner rather than later could be pretty handy. Because I could have benefited in many situations by having some heavier surface assets. Kendari. That area is a hellhole. I absolutely despise that area. That was a place that we lost many, many good men and good ships to submarines. So we'll have to try and, and uh, avoid that if we can. Have to be a pretty rapid campaign through here. And it generally can be. It's just making you sure you have enough spot elements, which is why I'd like to have two additional BBs for that. Uh, so we have MKB, which actually has a pretty nice force. That's a pretty well supported uh, CV out there. There's part of me that's like, hmm, how could we make use of this? Because this is a useful task force to begin with. You only have the 12 B5 N1s there. But it's more or less a B5 N2 anyway. But the great thing is that obviously we do have some torpedoes. So I do like the Rougeau. Especially in this situation, I'm considering bringing the uh, Kaganakaki down here. With the BBs essentially is kind of what I'm thinking towards. And having them really be the big heavy hitters in that area. I mean that's one of the options. The other option is I could have Kaganakaki actually... Uh, move down to the South China Sea and actually have them move down to support the Blaine campaign. And that, in theory, I mean, a lot of people do bring the entirety of Kid Battalion sometimes, but I think two two of the CVs there could be pretty useful. Yeah, well, obviously, be definitely useful. Would definitely, definitely be useful. But then, uh... well, there's a chance that we lose a couple aircraft out there due to the resistance from layer. But the resistance layer is not that immense. Ah, uh, yeah. Prioritize the ships and improve depth charge. Yep, for sure. I think essentially where we can from day one, we'll take the... Oh, I'm trying to remember the name of the class now by memory. Oh, it's a certain destroyer that can be... Given a conversion day one, well, a uh, refit day one. Try remember it now. It'll come to me. I feel like it begins with F. Hmm, I could be wrong. Fabuki, bloody well know it. Yeah, we do have a couple of Fabukis. I really wish you could sort solve this by class. That'd be phenomenal. Right, I keep finding Fabuki twos. Okay, yeah. So we have this for Buki, and this one's available pretty much. Out of the gate. Near enough. Also, we'll be moving into January pretty quick. We're not turn one, man, actually. I'd have to double check that. I know it's pretty early. Do I have any Fabukis in, uh, in port anywhere? As you can see, it's been a while since the last played, so I'm having to remember all these uh, things. Uh, now let's say they're all out, see. So it might be like um, a January of sorts, I think. Yeah, looks like January in Fury. Yeah, looks like January 42 then. Okay, never mind, not turn one, but one of the earlier turns. But yeah, we'd have them switched out and have them upgrade to the Babuki 2 and give them those uh, dual purpose guns. And also, again, an increase in range is pretty nice. Okay. Hmm, we'd have to plot our arrival of Kaga and Akagi. It does depend, really, because there's, there's a number of different things that we could do. And they all have, like, ups and downs. Like, there's an up and down advantage-disadvantage to having Rougeau. 
like with Ryujo because it's just a 12 you could have Ryujo actually sent out I think is she a magic task force I don't think she is oh she is a magic task force there oh, we do have a couple though we have two okay so we do have two magic task forces there so yeah she could definitely be used to hit Manila And it's great. Don't get me wrong. You can hit a lot of submarines out of Manila. Which does make your life easier. I mean, I complained about losing <laughs> losing ships at uh, Kandari. But at least for me, I always prefer to concentrate more on the actual aircraft in Luzon to begin with. Because those are things that can be quite the immediate problem. Uh, but I'm kind of thinking that we could have Rujo sent south. Just south of Mindanao. In that kind of rough area. Kind of kind of linger around here. The idea being kind of, I want to prevent... Oh, is it is it the Houston? Or New Orleans? I think it might be the Houston around here. I forget whether it's the New Orleans or the New Orleans class or whether it's Houston. But something like that. It's a heavy cruiser around here. Uh, there's a heavy cruiser around here that I'd like to sink. Uh, there's the... God... Scary, uh, the, the freaking horrifically scary. Um, ah, oh, what is it? It's not Baltimore. I forgot the name now. Let's go ahead and take a look. It's a light cruiser, basically, with like heavy cruiser firepower. It's got a certain name. Shows a light cruiser. Is that a Brooklyn class? It could be a Brooklyn class. I forget the uh, class of it, but it could be the Brooklyn though. I mean, that thing has a ridiculous amount of guns. Either way, there is a certain light cruiser. I forget the name of, but one in this area that we'd like to destroy too. Also, there's a lot of ships and there's a lot of things that move out of here. Um, the things I'd really like to destroy obviously would be like such things as V17s and etc. Uh, aircraft, but more so been able to destroy any support personnel that try to escape is also very useful. Okay. Uh, I think what I'll go ahead and do then is the usual. You can move some G4M1s over here to Cameron come around Bay, I believe. Oh, the boys there. Yeah, that's it. Thanks, Keith. So I could have some G4M1s moved over here to Cameron come around Bay, which is useful. They actually are in range of Manila. I think it's not certain whether or not they fly to anyone, but I think they can. Um, but I do like to go ahead and sweep these uh, bases over here on Luzon. It's the main, main ones. And I'd like to go ahead, I, I usually like to go ahead and use the air power to hit Manila. Uh, but I don't know. When I say hit Manila, I mean the airfield. But there's a good argument to be made for hit the port. But for me, I'd rather lose the less aircraft. But it's one of those, isn't it? Uh, we'll have to figure that one out, decide that one. Okay. But I think I would go ahead and have uh, Kaga and Akagi actually bypass. And uh, move into this area there, really. Yeah, Houston. Yeah, that's the heavy cruiser I was thinking of. Now, whether or not I'd have the two BBs, uh, the fast BBs, move down here or move down here. Is not uh, not certain. I don't think Kaga and Akagi need the fast BBs, and they kind of would be slowed down by the uh, crew uh, uh, carriers, in fact. Hmm. It wouldn't hurt to have them, but it wouldn't hurt to have some BBs out here either. Ah, oh, yes, seaplane carriers, cruisers, I should say. Yeah, you know it. You know it, 80. You choose fantastic. Uh, we will be calling it relatively soon. This has been more of a rambling one, but we'll be calling it relatively soon. It's very warm right now. Um, it is getting a little bit late, so I don't want to stay too long. I'm going to have a terrible habit of doing that. We're essentially thinking about the Kaga and the Kagi coming down this way. Whether or not I bring the BPs with them or not, um, other than the ones in this area. We'll see. 
But, uh, I Having them in that area would be fantastic. Just great for the fact I've been able to cover land and forces for the most part. So that's got to be a real priority. I've also just been able to use the zeros to sweep missions. But I think I would be reluctant to use the uh, kind of tie zeros to sweep Singapore, for example. So I do have those land-based zeros, and those are generally assigned, assigned to the kind of tie. They usually pretty good. It's not a major issue, really, because we can use shenanigans to move parts around. But I'd rather avoid that if I can, and not rely on it. But yeah, that's generally how we'll go with things. Let's well, take a look at the R&D, then. I'm not... Uh, I'm not super sure. Well, we'll see here. I need to go ahead and find that uh, list of changes that I mentioned earlier. Let's see, then. Database. I don't think it's new. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't think there's new ones, but I could be wrong. We'll have to make our choices on R&D soon enough. That's going to be fun. That'll be fun. I say that rather in jest. How you doing that, Stas? Yeah, it'll take a while. It's going to take a while to get things set up and ready, really. But once it gets going, it, it's a lot easier to work with. Uh, the big question is going to be kind of which late war vanity aircraft we're going to be looking towards. I still like the Key 83. Never got one. It would be nice to get one one day. Hmm. Ah, thanks, Stas. That's, that's appreciated, my man. That's the first donation I've had in a while, actually. At least like, by the YouTube system. So thank you. Shoo shoo. I got to go to Okay. I think I may be leaning towards single engine vanity aircraft in this one. It does depend though. The Key A3 is still fantastic, I've got to admit. And the fact that it has that 56 accuracy of those cannons is pretty useful. That's two. Good range. Damn good aircraft. Yeah. The reason why I'm thinking towards perhaps single engine is just kind of in that uh, sentence there, really. It's a single engine. But it depends. Yeah, don't worry about it, 80s. Mostly just getting things uh, set up, really. And a little bit of rambling. So they're not recognizing any distinct aircraft. I don't know if there's any added. I don't think there's any added. I think I think it's just simply perhaps changes to the OLB. I could be wrong. Uh, perhaps changes to the actual sh uh, ships that are going to be built. I need to find a goddamn list of changes to start to. That'd help. Let's see. Ship availability. I think that, yeah, I think it's more... Fleet carriers, perhaps? Mm. I mean, these could be accelerated. Which of the Japanese light bombs do you like? Key 15 or Key 30? A specific question. Let's take a look at that. Ha! Pacific specific. Ho ho! Would they become sit? Ah, oh, level boys. Hmm. 
three. Yeah, the Helen's a good. And that's not a light bomber, I guess, is it really? It's just a light bomber. I guess a lily. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna say the lily. I know it's considered a medium bomber, but the the light bombers are kind of trash to you. And if you have the capacity, uh, our production numbers. You'd be better off just having them in, in something like a lily. But in terms of the light bombers, goddamn, it's a tough question. There's a number of open. Oh, oh, what is it? Optimum number of factories. Sorry, I was, I was reading that really differently. I said, what was the number of opium factories? So there we go. Maybe that's a Freudian slip there. <laughs> what is the optimum number of factories in Scenario 2? Uh, to be honest, we start with even more industry in Scenario 2 as far as I'm aware. I'm going to have to see that list uh, than we do in Scenario 1. And I didn't build heavy industry in Scenario 1 anyway. So for me, between what we have and, and what we have, really. You'll capture heavy industry for the most part. It's more sort of keeping that industrial base afloat for the most part. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and call it here. Most have been amusing the stream. Just came back to things and I've just getting the scenario loaded up. I just need to find a goddamn list of changes so I can really speak about things in more detail. Oh yeah, that was the point of the question, honestly, like asking people was the third, third thing out of group of trash stuff. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and give a serious answer to that one. Let's go ahead and give a serious then. Mm. See, the Ida actually has a camera. Shit all in terms of bombs, but they're not bad against airfields. You don't need to hit an airfield with like a, a big bomb to damage you. Just any bomb, really. And again, the Sonoya has the camera of the 50 kilogram bombs, but lesser range. So, of the light bombs I can be asked to find, and then we have the Ann. Okay, the Ann's good because it actually has a 250 kilogram. That's good if you actually want to hit something and damage it. So that's probably better against uh, ground units. Just having that higher, higher, well, payload there, really. So she's good for obviously hitting ground targets. Probably better against hitting airfields. But I think, as far as I'm aware, more bombs is better versus airfields. Uh, but of the remaining shit all, uh, shitty ones, I, I do like the Sonoya. Sorry, not the Sonoya. The Ida. As it does have a little bit more range. I have a bloody ant in my room. How the hell has that got in here? But yeah, you get a cameras. Just these guys I kind of treat like reconnaissance aircraft in fairness because they do have a camera. If you've got like a reconnaissance uh, part in there, you could probably use them as reconnaissance. Why not? Why not? But there we go. Thanks for watching. And uh, do comment below with advice or a list of scenario 2 changes. That'd be even better. But yeah, we'll cut it here. Um, we'll get this campaign going as quickly as we can, really. We'll see how real life intrudes up to next time. Thank you, Hoysmi, Nasai, Zai Jian. Goodbye for now.